Hello everyone, um, welcome to week 3 of CH109 and today we will be looking at buffers and to begin the experiment we are going to first need to calibrate the pH probe and just like in um, experiment 1 you must have learned how to calibrate uh, the pH probe and I have already done that with this pH probe so I'm not going to go over that once again so to begin the experiment I'm starting with the hydrochloric acid sorry, the water solution that I'm going to be adding hydrochloric acid to and to do that I'm going to lower the pH probe into the solution so that we can measure the pH of the solution but before I do that, I'm going to rinse the probe to make sure it is clean. And then I'm going to wipe down the probe itself. And then I'll lower the probe into the solution. Now if you look at my beaker, you will notice that I have a sterra in there. I have put the sterra in there because since we are going to be adding drops of the hydrochloric acid, the buffer, the sodium hydroxide into the solution, we want it to be thoroughly mixed so that we are measuring the actual pH while it is thoroughly mixed. So to begin, I am going to be adding the sodium hydro sorry, the hydrochloric acid to the water solution and like the manual says you're adding 10 drops first so i'll go ahead to add the 10 drops so i have added the 10 drops of this hydrochloric acid to the solution And with it thoroughly mixed, the pH is 3.23. I'll go ahead to add the next 10 drops. And we'll wait for the pH probe to stabilize. And that gives us a pH of 2.89. I will go ahead to add the next 10 drops. wait for the pH probe to stabilize and that gives us a pH of 2.72 and I'll go ahead to add the next 10 drops that makes 40 drops altogether and wait for the pH probe to stabilize and that gives us a pH of 2.62 I will go ahead to add the final 10 drops to the solution and wait for the pH probe to settle And that takes the pH down to 2.52. And we, we will move to the next one, which is using water with the sodium hydroxide solution. 
but first I will rinse out the pH probe. We don't want cross contamination. We don't want to take, you know, the solution that we just used and cross contaminate the new one that we are making. So I will wipe that down also. And then place my new solution there. This is just water. And I'm going to be adding sodium hydroxide in this case. So I'll put my pH probe in there. So I have my pH probe in there and I'm now going to start by adding 10 drops of my 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide. Oh, we have to note the pH when we haven't added the sodium hydroxide and the pH in this case is 5.9 three so I'll go ahead to add the first 10 drops and wait for the pH probe to settle until we have a definite reading And the pH is 10.99. And I'll go ahead to add the second 10 drops. And wait for the pH probe to stabilize. And that takes the pH to 11.32 I'll go ahead to add the third and wait for the pH probe to stabilize and that takes our pH to 11.48 I'll go ahead to add the next 10 and that takes the pH to about 11.6 and then the final 10 drops and that takes us to 11.68 so, I will bring out my pH probe once again. And rinse it out. I will wipe that down. And move on to the next set of experiments. This case, this time we are using the buffer with the acid and the base. So I'm going to begin with the buffer solution and we'll add drops of hydrochloric acid and see the effect that that has on the buffer.
so the pH before adding the hydrochloric acid is 4.7 4.69 I'll add the first 10 drops and the pH is 4.6 Six. I will add the next ten drops. And the pH is stable at four point six five. I'll add the next ten drops. And the pH is 4.64. I'll add the next 10 drops. And that gets the pH down to 4.63. And the final 10 drops. And as you can see, the pH is still 4.63, which helps to justify the definition of what a buffer is. It resists the changes in pH when little amounts of acid, in this case of which we have shown, is added to the solution. So we are going to move on to using the sodium hydroxide and see if we can see the same trend with the buffer solution. But before, we have to rinse the pH probe once again. Every time we change solutions, we have to rinse the pH probe. And also wipe it down. So I have my buffer solution once again. And I'm going to lower the probe into the buffer solution. The pH is 4.66 before adding the sodium hydroxide. And I will go ahead to add the first 10 drops of the sodium hydroxide. So we see little or no change. The pH is still 4.66. I will go ahead to add the next 10 drops. And as you can see, the pH is still 4.66. I'll go ahead to add the next 10 drops. We still see little or no change. The pH is still 4.66. I'm adding the next 10 drops. And for the first time, we have a pH change to 4.67 ish. 
and the final 10 drops. And the pH is still 4.67, which also means addition of little uh, amounts of alkali to the solution, the buffer solution changes the pH very little. So I would rinse the probe, pH probe once again and then wipe it down and put it in the storage solution and And just like in the manual, we have demonstrated that the pH doesn't really change when you add either an acid or a base to a buffer solution because of the presence of the, the weak acid and the conjugate base in the solution, you are able to keep the pH of the solution stable. And yeah, that ends the experiment three lab. Thank you.